When you inherit a house from either a parent, relative, or friend, this is a very difficult time and extremely daunting on just so many levels. Most likely you are mourning the loss of a loved one and yet you need to put on your business hat and make some really rather tough decisions quickly, especially if there's a mortgage or monthly expenses to be paid. The question is, where on earth do you start? Well, I have helped hundreds of families through this process and in this video, I want to give you guidelines on what the first step is, what needs to be done, and helpful hints on how to proceed with the least amount of stress. Hi, I'm Maria Wells, your real estate expert on the Treasure Coast of Florida, providing all sorts of information on neighborhoods, homes, and current topics in real estate. Remember to hit subscribe to my channel to receive all sorts of information on buying and selling real estate released every Tuesday. Remember first that this doesn't need to be done in a day. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you is to contact your relative's attorney to see the legal responsibility you may have. You need to see if in fact you are the one who will be responsible for this project and then there are many steps to take place. However, many times families are surprised as there may have been a change in a will or a trust or maybe there's not even a will and who thought was responsible isn't. So getting this settled first is paramount. There may be different and specific time frames according to how they passed away, whether they had a will or not, on what you need to follow. So now, typically, the attorneys will give you the answers to that question, and they have specialists to help guide you. I work with an elder law attorney all the time who directs someone just like you my way so I can sit down and come up with a tailor-made plan just for them. So let me list many of the basics of what I will discuss with a family in hopes this will help you if you find yourself with this responsibility. Well, after the discussion with the attorney and once you know the time frame, this all needs to happen and if the home needs to be made ready for sale, then this is what I would discuss with a trustee or personal representative. That's what you would be titled if you are the one responsible and how to begin. Well, if it needs to be sold as soon as possible, you may want to rent a storage unit for safekeeping of some items, especially if there are multiple heirs, they're not local, and it may take a while for them to come and retrieve the items. This way, the house isn't waiting to be sold. They can come get them in the storage unit when it is best suited for them. It is better to clean out the house before putting it to sale so it looks fresh, clean, and not cluttered with all of the belongings. This is also a time to rustle up some help, whether it be friends, relatives, professionals. Trust me, it's a bigger job than you think. So here we go. First, you need to identify legal documents. That would be things like closing papers from the home, insurance policies, bank information, tax filings, investments, anything that would be tied to money. If you have a question about it, just keep it. You may want to place all of these items in a box to sort out at another location. Now remember, you must keep most of these things for seven years. But if you come across that there's old bank statements and tax returns from the last 10 to 15 years, put that in another box for shredding. And depending on how much you have, there are bulk shredding companies that you can pay for by the box when you are done. Next, the last wishes for the heirs. Well, if you've been provided a list of heirs and what was going to go to them, put tags on those items and set them aside. I recommend using color-coded sticky dots like the bigger ones and everyone gets their own color. So it's easy to identify who gets what. And if the heirs are not local and you may need to pack these items up, it's going to make it a lot easier just to get everything by whatever color coding it is. Next, you need to look for valuables. That is jewelry, gold, silver that may be in the house. Well, I recommend that if this is to be divided between so many people, that this be done first and if at all possible while you're together. Because if it's done first, people tend to work much better in the beginning and that's usually the hardest thing to decide who gets what so you might as well get that out of the way. Next is the mementos and sentimental items. So this actually slows things down because it will bring back so many memories and sometimes it really pulls at your heartstrings. It's one of the most difficult things to do so you may want to get all the mementos and sentimental things, place them in another box to go through at another time. I can tell you I did that when 
my mother passed and it took me a year or so before I could really go through all that and sort of look at it and sort through it. So you might want to think about that. So what do you do with all the photos? Now that generation tends to have photo albums and so much stuff kept on paper where ours are mostly digital. So at this point you need to put the photos in another area or a box and there are ways down the road whether you want to scan them, make a collage and maybe there's some special photos you would like to give to a family member but today isn't the day. Put that in a box for a rainy day. Next is you'll sort out the cabinets and drawers. Well this becomes one of the most tedious functions so I recommend having like four areas of the house to make it easier as you're working through it. So one area would be for donations. Make that close to the door so you can take them out to your car or have them picked up. Another area for relatives or friends that they may take. Another area to throw out if it's a home. I recommend putting that in the garage so that's easy to take out when the time comes. And one that will go in the storage unit. When you do sort the things to be thrown out at the end, if there is a huge pile, I highly highly recommend renting a dumpster so that everything can easily go in the dumpster instead of multiple trips to the street leaving things out there because another thing when you leave bags and bags of garbage depending on the area you are there will be people that will come rummage through bags and you will find your stuff displayed all over the street and you have to pick it up again so I highly recommend a dumpster. Next is the furniture and housing accessories and again these would go into the four piles I just mentioned. Don't ignore having a resale company look at them or if you're brave to sell on social media you can get a pretty penny for them if you've got time to do that. Next don't forget the attic. Make sure to put this on your list because by the time you get to the attic you're usually exhausted but you would be surprised the things that will be left up there or have been stuffed up there for years. So make sure that you get up there to get it taken care of. I also want to say even though these are the items to try to get done you have got to be kind to yourself. Do not set unrealistic expectations. Set a goal of what you're going to get done and then quit for the day. The worst thing you could do is become so exhausted you can't even think straight as you're doing it. Make sure you have enlisted as many people as you can to help you. It could be friends, it could be relatives, it could be from your church or your synagogue, wherever that is to get people to help you or you might have to hire professionals because this is too daunting of a job for you to do it by yourself and believe me I see a lot of families and go oh yeah this is no problem we will get this done but a couple days in they're getting pretty exhausted and they realize they bit off more than they can chew so make sure in addition to all this that you reward yourself after you've done a day or two of this go have a nice dinner go have a cocktail if you want do something to get away because you will feel much more refreshed in the end to tackle this job the next day so there is so much more to this task that I will cover in other videos but in the meantime I'm happy to answer any questions you may have because I realize how difficult and how hard this is for a family or if you've been given this task so please put your questions below I will answer them as soon as I can and in the meantime please take care of yourself until next time